Hi guys, welcome back to the Crumbs and Doilies kitchen here in Soho. Back with me, Dane, and here today I'm gonna make for you a recipe that we've gone back through the Crumbs and Doilies archives and it's one of our really amazing tray bakes. It's a brownie and it's the double decker brownie. It's got multiple different layers. It's got a rice crispy, chewy marshmallow base, a decadent fudge brownie topped with a vanilla nougat and then a milk chocolate ganache on top. It's so good you're not gonna wanna miss this. And we posted it on Instagram a couple of weeks ago, and of course, you guys hounded us for the recipe, so we're here today to show you how to make it. First things first, we're gonna start with the brownie. So I've got 165 grams of unsalted butter, it's going into a bowl, and 165 grams of 70% chocolate, which I'm gonna melt in the microwave. So the chocolate is all melted. It's nice and glossy and smooth. Of a pouring chocolate shot is necessary always here. So we'll set this to one side and next we'll get on with the mixture which contains eggs and sugar. So I've got three large eggs here. I'll crack into a separate bowl. We always crack into a separate bowl just in case you get any shell. I'm not going for a double-handed crack today because Sally's not here and I don't feel as confident, okay? So we're just gonna go one-handed crack and that's that. And I've got 330 grams of caster sugar going into the bowl and we're gonna use a whisk attachment to get it nice and frothed up. You'll see this mixture go really light and pale and fluffy onto a high speed. So, as you can see, that is really pale, fluffy, whipped up. That's exactly what we want it to be because that will get a nice, shiny, kind of crackly, brownie top. And next, we're gonna add a little bit of vanilla. It's vanilla extract that you can get from Cupcake Gemma. One generous teaspoon. Just adds a little bit of extra flavor in there. And then it's time for our chocolate and butter mixture. Just gonna look super sensual. Are you ready, Sam? That is all in. We don't want to waste any of this chocolate mixture because that is when it's going to make the brownie nice and rich and decadent. It's got chocolate and cocoa in this recipe, so it's extra chocolatey. So we'll just give this a little mix on a slow speed for about 10 seconds just to combine those together and then we'll add the dry ingredients. So that's all nicely combined and then I'm just going to take the whisk out just to sieve in the dry ingredients. So here I've got 120 grams of plain flour and 45 grams of cocoa powder. Now, this is um, Dutch processed cocoa powder, so it's a lot darker. If you check back through our cookie masterclass that Sally and I did a few weeks ago, you'll know that there's quite a bit of a difference between the cocoa powders. This is more intense, and the other version that you kind of get more in supermarkets, you can find this online, is a little bit lighter. Save that for maybe your hot chocolates where you're adding actual chunks of chocolate. So they're going straight into the sieve, and then we've got some salt, always, because it gives flavor, and we've got some baking powder, half a teaspoon of both of those. Sift this in, and then we'll get back on the mixer, put it on a low speed until it's combined and it'll be a really nice thick mixture. This is ready. Are you ready though? Look at that, that is exactly what we want. It's super glossy, really thick, shiny, and uber chocolatey. <clears throat> okay, well now we'll leave this for a second because we need to prepare our tin. And before we put it in the tin, we'll give it a scrape down just to get any bits of flour at the bottom. But as usual, I've got um, a 10 inch square tin. You could do it in a half a size, which would be about a seven inch tin. And we'll put the um, ingredient quantities for that down below in the description box. And I'm just gonna grease it with some Tin spray, this will make your life a whole lot easier. We also sell this on cupcakegemma.com. It's just the best thing. If you're an avid baker and you're always flouring and sugaring your tins, this will make your life a lot easier. So, papered one side, give it another spray. And this is just greaseproof paper. You can just cut to size to whatever tin you're using. And we'll pop another one up here that it's all protected. And this will just make sure that our brownie, it's easier to get out of the tin. So, back to the mixture. Get all of this goodness off of the whisk, and then we'll give it a scrape round. 
because these mixes are great, but you might get some little bits at the bottom that you just, it didn't catch quite. So, I could just watch this all day. But we need to get it in the tin and get it baking. So pop this all into the tin. Don't waste any of this mixture. And then, oh guys, it's easy to grab an offset spatula. But that's the great thing about this kitchen. Everything is in arm's reach. And we'll just spread this out so it's nice and level before it goes into the oven. There we go. And we're gonna pop this in the oven for 17 minutes, well about 17 to 20 minutes, it'll depend on your oven, at 175 degrees Celsius until not kind of a skewer comes out clean because you want a brownie to be nice and fudgy and ooey and gooey. So I would say bake it until um, you kind of put a skewer in and it comes out with a little bit of mixture on it. It'll be kind of wet still. That's what we're looking for. Our brownie is out of the oven. It's been 17 minutes, it's cooled down, and it's really nice and shiny and crinkly and crackly on top, just the way we want it to be. And when we cut into that brownie, it's gonna be really decadent and fudgy. So now we're gonna make the Rice Krispie layer that I was talking about at the start. It's got marshmallows. It's kind of like a Rice Krispie treat layer. Um, so we'll start with some butter. Um, this is 55 grams of unsalted butter going straight into the saucepan. And we just wanna get this a little bit brown so it's got a little bit of flavor to the um, marshmallow layer. Otherwise, it will just be super sweet with the marshmallows. So take about five minutes or so. So the butter is ready. It's kind of smoking. It's got that kind of nutty, almost toasted butter smell. Um, you've got those kind of flecks in there that are obviously burnt, as in burnt butter, and that is exactly what we want because that's going to give a lot of flavour to the Rice Krispie base. So that's done, we'll turn it off, and next in we'll add some white marshmallows. You can use the pink and white ones that you get, we'll just have a little bit of a pink kind of tinge to it, um, but these are going straight in, and we've got 160 grams of those, along with a pinch of salt just to balance out the flavour and we'll give this a mix. We just want to melt the marshmallows. So this should happen from just the heat of the pan because it's still super hot, but if you need to put it back on the heat just to melt them a little bit more, go for it. But be careful and don't burn it because we're not looking for a burnt marshmallow. So this is kind of a marshmallowy mass now. Looks really yummy, but it's super hot and then we're gonna put the Rice Krispies in. So this is just like puffed up rice breakfast cereal. Um, and we've got um, 115 grams of those going straight in. Now we need to be quite quick with this because the marshmallow will start setting and just give it a, a mix around until it's all combined. This will take me a minute or so. <laughs> Look at that. Super sticky, gorgeous, it's crunchy. We've got the burnt butter flecks in there. It'll give a lot of flavor. Now, we've got to be quick sticks and pop it onto our brownie base before it starts to set. So we'll just pop it all on here and just level it out using the spoon. Don't you just hate when you're halfway through and you realize you need to switch implements. I've opted for the um, cranked palette knife because it will just give me a little bit more control and I'll be able to smush it around a lot better just to get it right into the corners there. Do you remember I was saying you need to work fast? We well, really do because it's starting to cool on me now and set the marshmallow. That is good, it's all leveled out. I've pushed it right into the corners and you wanna make sure you press it up against the edge um, of the tin and it's nice and neat because if you don't, when you take it out of the tin, um, you're gonna have those kind of gaps and we want a nice straight edge tray bake. Right, this is gonna go into the fridge for about 10 minutes just to set this layer Then we'll flip it upside down because it goes Rice Krispie layer, brownie, and then the nougat. 
Auf die Seite. Brownie base with the Rice Krispie top has been chilling out in the freezer just to set that top layer. Now what we're going to do is flip reverse it because we want the Rice Krispie layer on the bottom. So handy because you can just pop the bottom of this tin out and we'll just peel back the paper. So you can start to see the layers come together already which is super cool. I'll just take the base off, that always makes it easier to cut. And then We'll just chop it straight in half, just make it a lot easier to pop back in the tin. So what we're going to do now is reline the tin. We've got two extra bits of paper. Slide this along and we'll get back our grease spray. Very handy grease spray. And just line the tin again. Nice. So what I like to do is, it's quite stable this, so you can just pick it up, pop it on its side, and then it'll make it a little bit easier just to peel back the paper like so. And it comes clean off. So we'll take this half, flip it upside down, and just place it back in the tin. Just make sure that you don't kind of nick any of the bits of side of paper, because um, you don't want that kind of going down in the layers that we're going to create with the nougat on top, and then also the ganache. There we go, and once it's all in, just give it a really firm press down just so that the Rice Krispie layer and the brownie are nicely sandwiched together. Um, because if not, it might tend to come apart, and it also could come apart if you kind of weren't quick enough in working earlier on and let it set a little bit too much so it didn't stick enough to the brownie. Right, that's all done. I can go over there. and. Now we'll get on with making the nougat layer. So back to the hob, I've got my saucepan and 55 grams of unsalted butter going straight in. And we're just gonna melt this, no need to burn it this time. The butter is all melted now, and then we're gonna add in our caster sugar. So we've got 200 grams of caster sugar here, and it's quite important to use caster sugar in this um, part of the recipe because you want it nice and super fine so it dissolves um, in the nougat. And to the caster sugar, we're also going to add some evaporated milk. We've got 60 milliliters here. You can find it readily available in the supermarkets as well. It usually comes in a, in a small tin or a large tin, um, and it keeps in the fridge for around two to three days. So you can make a couple of these brownies or find a different recipe that uses evaporated milk just to use it up. And we're going to keep this stirring on the hob constantly. It's super important with this um, part of the recipe to constantly stir this mixture because you don't want to burn it and you want to dissolve the sugar fully or else when we cut into the final brownie, it might just ooze everywhere. And it might look super cool for a picture, but it's really messy to eat and it's not very presentable. We're going for presentable looking brownies, basically. <laughs> The nougat is ready, and this is kind of like a cheats nougat, so it doesn't require any temperatures, but it requires a little bit of time and patience. So you saw how the, te the texture should be. It's kind of like a really sloppy mashed potato. Next, we're gonna add the marshmallow fluff. So this is kind of like whipped sugar and corn syrup and dried egg white, basically. It's super sweet, and it's almost like a kind of spreadable marshmallow. So one jar of that is going in which is about 213 grams to be precise. But listen guys, weighing this stuff, you're gonna be here for days, so just one jar, please. <laughs> yes. So that is all out. And then we're gonna add a little bit of vanilla, which um, I'm gonna eyeball this one, about half a teaspoon. That's in, and we'll just give it a really good beat around. Mm -hmm. 
This mixture is super thick and what I forgot to tell you is this takes about 10 minutes so do have patience and you want to wait till it's that really thick kind of really sloppy mashed potato mixture. Before it's ready it will kind of look a bit like cream of chicken soup and then it will go to the mashed potato. <laughs> um, but this is really smooth and it's going all onto the brownie layer. Again, this is another layer that will start to set quite quickly, which is also kind of a good test because you can know if it's you've made it correctly and it's not going to kind of ooze once you cut into it. Um, when I've kind of spread it out with my offset spatula, I'm, I've just scraped it against here and you can see it's kind of taken the shape of that blob, so you know it's going to set. And we're actually going to put this back into the fridge um, to set this layer and then we'll do the chocolate topping. Our brownie is chilling in the fridge, now time to make the ganache. This is a milk chocolate ganache and I've got 200 grams of milk chocolate chips here. Um, you could just use a bar of milk chocolate, that's totally fine, and some double cream. I'm going to weigh out 100 millilitres into the bowl. And I'm going to make this ganache over a bain-marie, so just a pan of um, simmering water, about a quarter full. And it's just kind of a more gentle way to make it and also it's a little bit more interesting. I don't want to hop off to the microwave and just leave you guys standing here. So, just give this a little bit of a mix and just leave it on a really low, gentle simmer and keep giving it a stir every couple of minutes just to melt the chocolate. You don't need like a super fiery, hot heat to melt the chocolate. Remember, chocolate melts in your pocket, so this won't take much to melt it. Mmm, mmm. Ganache is ready and I actually ended up turning the hob off halfway through this process because the water kept on simmering and so there's enough heat there to melt the chocolate and um, just give it a nice stir so that all of the cream is mixed in. We'll take this off, grab our brownie and we'll do the final layer. This is going to go straight onto here. I want to lick the bowl, but we need all the chocolate for the topping. Okay, and again, these tray bakes, um, any kind of multi-layered thing is always really handy to have this tool, the crank palette knife, which you can also find on cupcakegerman.com. <laughs> We've got all the tools there and that you need to create all the masterpieces that we do here on the channel. And it's going to spread it out, touching all of the corners. I've leveled off the chocolate layer and you can give it kind of a few taps or bangs on the table just to get the chocolate layer really nice and flat and you're going to tell me off but this is going to go back into the fridge for about two hours this time. All of our brownies and tray bakes we always set in the fridge for a good amount of time because remember we baked that brownie and kind of underbaked it a little bit. Like the blondies I made a few weeks ago, the chocolate and the eggs and the sugar and the butter in there is still kind of a little bit soft and wet and so we just want to set it nice and firm so that it's a good dense brownie and you get a nice clean cut. So, off to the fridge. It's been a couple of hours, but I'm back and I've got the brownie ready to slice up. So that is the best thing about these kind of pop out loose bottom tins. Super easy to get it out and whoop. I hope it doesn't fall over. Just take the bottom off, lay it back down, and you might have seen this before on the channel, you might have seen them in general. It's kind of like a pastry roller. You can extend it to, well, this long, and it just makes sure you get like um, an even slice, and each one is the same size, which is really handy for here at the shop. We're doing like a lot of tray bakes. You wanna make sure that they're all even. So I'll peel back the paper. And 
hopefully, you should be able to see those layers on there. It's super sticky, but you'll see them more once we cut into it. So I'll just extend this to each edge of the brownie and just go lightly over the top, just to score it so that we know where we're going to cut. Time for the cutting. First of all though, I'm just gonna heat up the knife just a little bit, it'll just make it a little bit easier to get through that nougat and the ganache. That's all it needs, and we'll go in. Look at those layers. The super fudgy brownie in the middle that I was talking about. It's really shiny and wet. And then you've got the kind of chewy, crispy layer of the Rice Krispies. You've got the milk chocolate ganache. This is gonna be, I cannot wait to tuck in, but first I've got to cut it up into little pieces because I've got other people here that want to eat it. I can't just eat this whole slab myself. Although I would devour this if I was at home. Nikki's shaking her head, but I can do it. I can do this. I've got to cut it up. Let's go. <laughs> So what I'm doing after each cut, because the knife is a little bit dirty, I've just got a clean kitchen, damp clean kitchen cloth here, wiping it in between every time and just reheat, reheating it on the blowtorch just for a couple of seconds, just so it's easier to glide through. And also once I take the knife out, I'm sliding it out, I'm not lifting it up, because then you're kind of lifting up the chocolate and stuff and the cut will get a little bit messier. Mmm, look at this. Those layers look divine. And you can still see the white bit of the nougat. That's really important that we didn't burn the butter and also we didn't cook it for too long because we want to keep that nice kind of white ivory color so you get the contrast. Right, it's time to dig in. This is going to be epic. Mmm, look at that. Listen guys, underbake your brownies, put them in the fridge. I cannot. Mm, I want to take, I'm taking all of this home, so, sorry, I have to bake another one. The brownie is so fudgy, you get the crunch from the Rice Krispies, the nougat is super smooth, it's almost a bit like the nougat that you get in like a milky way, it's just divine. And the base isn't too sweet as well, because we put, burnt that butter, put a little bit of salt in there, this is epic. You guys need to make this, and also, we'll have it in the store, in Soho, this weekend, so come grab yourself a slice because, listen, I'm telling you, you need this in your life. And if I'm telling you, you need this in your life, you need this in your life. Yes. Well, that's it. Another week, another recipe. Thank you so much for watching. I've still got brownie in my mouth, so I'm going to finish this. And um, don't forget, if you make this brownie, tag us at Crumbs and Doilies, at Cupcake Gemma at Dame Pemberton, so I can see that you've made this and you are loving it because you guys made so, so many of you made the raspberry blondie that I made a couple of weeks ago and you're killing it. So we love to see it. So thanks so much. I'm gonna continue eating this and don't forget to like and subscribe as well. I can't believe you've got all the way through this video without clicking the subscribe button because it's just there. Don't be a lazy ass. See you next week. Mm.